try to do things in my studio that I love. I like to keep myself happy all the time. And so I really enjoy what clay does. I love the fact that it moves around. I like the fact the way we all love the spinning potting wheel, but you got to make it do something. You got to give it a voice and share in, in what it can do. And so I, I love all the aspects of the drama that is wet clay. And so why not give yourself excuses or opportunities to see it happen? So that's really what I'm partially what I'm doing right now. You, you know, you might think I'm designing something, but I'm just like enjoying what's happening. And so I keep making it happen more. This group of vase forms that I've been making recently is off the center axis a little bit, maybe a lot sometimes. But it's a different way of pushing the things around. I push the cups around right away with the wet wheel. These, I let wait a little bit, and then I get equally or similarly aggressive with them. So there's a play between the actual and the artificial, or the conceit of an approach in my work, or in these pots. There's an actual event, and then there's designed, designed things or phenomena that keep happening. I like to make things up. I, I don't like to repeat. I will come up with a series of things or try to address them over and over again. I've probably made three dozen of these vase structures recently, but they're kind of a new thing uh, from some kind of another inference that I had, like looking, looking at structure or the anatomy of a thing and saying, how can I build that as a base thing and then undermine it or invent on it? And I'll find something else tomorrow. I look for moments of inspiration. Like I didn't know until just a minute ago that I was going to make a second little dimple here on this object. And that might be, if this turns into an interesting little passage, I might say, well, what if I turn that whole passage into a whole object? And I, I haven't done that before. I just have to invent it. So my system of carving is also a fantastic way of sort of visually stitching together these d disparate parts. So, you know, you put an appendage on and then you have that seam, you know, this strategy of taking the carving and extending it in back into the body of the object is also a, a really uh, gorgeous way to disguise the joining of an object at all. So you start to lose the sense that anything started or stopped. And that's just a, um, the residue of the device of doing the carving, which is exciting to me. I just, I get excited by those kind of logical truths about a thing. And then they become aesthetic. They become a part of the aesthetic of the object too. And they're, that's where that whole form follows function thing comes from. The, the function of putting something together also becomes implicit in the form of the aesthetic appearance of the thing. It's pretty cool. You know, when you do something for the first time, it has that first time authenticity, that kind of energy of the beginning. But one of the other things I tell my students is you have to do a thing more than once because the first time is just you figuring out the path and then you have to walk the path again. And by definition, the second time you walk the path, you already know what's coming up. Oh, there's that awesome piece of moss on the side that I want to pay attention to now I'm going to take a picture of it. Well, that means that when you get to that certain part of the process that you did in the maquette version or the first, all the first versions, you now get to go back and pay attention to and anticipate those moments or those steps. And you have to make more than one and the second and third and fourth and fifth and hundredth have to be better than the first. They're never gonna have that original value but we have to sort of dislocate ourselves from only valuing the authenticity of the beginning and start valuing the, the skill of the return trip.